Hi, good afternoon. I'm Jim Hodson. I'm the executive director here at the Fort Worth Aviation Museum. And we're standing in front of YF-16 number two, the number two prototype F-16 Fighting Falcon, as it was known then. This airplane is celebrating its 50th uh, anniversary of flight this month. The original first flight took place on May 9th, uh, 1974 at Edwards Air Force Base. Neil Anderson was the test pilot that day. This airplane and number one went on to fly approximately 330 missions at Edwards Air Force Base and 481 flight hours uh, while it was part of the uh, lightweight fighter program and competition. Uh, this one came to us uh, about four years ago after a long search and a long, uh, well, a long process of getting the airplane here thanks to Congresswoman Kay Granger and a number of other people who assisted with that project. You can see some uh, some images here on the screens on either side of the airplane. This is what the airplane looked like when it came to us almost four years ago. The airplane had been heavily modified so that it could be used at the Air Force Research uh, Facility in Rome, New York, where it was put up on top of a tower for testing regarding external stores and interference with the uh, antennas that were on the airplane. They had put a 10 inch a uh, 10 inch uh, uh, section in the fuselage, which was right back here in this area. So the fuselage was stretched nearly 10 inches. It had a completely different nose. It had a, uh, a production nose. This is a, the, y, uh, the YF version nose. Uh, the wings had been modified heavily so that they wanted the silhouette of the airplane to look like a production airplane for their testing purposes. Now the airplane was in Rome, New York for approximately 41 years. So given the time that the airplane was used for test and evaluation, uh, this airplane had served nearly 46 years, which makes this the longest serving F-16 ever. Uh, part of that uh, took place uh, originally during the testing. This airplane was, uh, was redesigned after the first one came out and they did some of the initial performance testing. This one was put, a gun was put on this airplane along with uh, some radar and some capabilities for wing stores. Uh, so that it could be tested in its uh, role with the lightweight fighter uh, competition against the YF-17, which became the F-18. So if we walk around the airplane a little bit, you can get a, a look at this. When we originally got the airplane, it had no landing gear. And as I mentioned, it had a number of the different, uh, uh, a number of the different modifications to it. So uh, the four-year restoration, a lot of it was searching for parts for this airplane. Uh, there had been myths about it regarding the landing gear, that the landing gear had uh, A7 landing gear and had a B-58 nose gear, only to find out none of that was actually true. Uh, we, did, we did find an early block model uh, landing gear for the airplane, and we hoped to be able to modify it sufficiently to, to uh, fit in the airplane. When they brought it back, it just snapped right into this airframe. So the landing gear on this one from the initial production is pretty much the same as all this one's got the rails for uh, sidewinders and for us uh, and for sparrows. We don't have any wing stations on this airplane. We probably will never put any wing stations on here. We're just going to walk you around. Uh, the airplane took approximately 10,000 hours of volunteer work here at the Fort Worth Aviation Museum and at Cowtown Aircrafters in uh, Justin, Texas. All of the work on this airplane was done here on the ramp out of doors. So summer, winter, for four years, people worked on the airplane here. A lot of the people were family members of people who had worked on the airplane at General Dynamics or Lockheed. Others were just aficionados uh, of the airplane itself. Uh, and others were people who had had some experience with this F-16 in their military service. As we walk around and point out the, the tail number on this airplane, this is 01568, which makes this the number two YF-16. The only thing that we've done with this airplane that was not original is we put the YF on the tail. This airplane actually never wore the YF, but we wanted to make sure that visitors knew when they came to see this airplane that this is the prototype airplane, not just an F-16 painted up in the red, white, and blue scheme. We have the tail feathers yet to go on the airplane, and uh, we'll get around to doing that. Right now, we're trying to figure out a way that we're going to so there's a number of things that took place with this airplane. Now, when we were looking for parts for the airplane to be able to 
complete the restoration, uh, one of the uh, places we went to said, well, we've got this old ammo drum, and if you'd like it, you can have it. And it turned out to be serial number one. It was the ammo drum that was made for this airplane specifically. And uh, so we're going to keep that aside as a, uh, uh, as a side exhibit for the airplane. Approximately 30 people uh, worked on this airplane for four years, with the painting being done at Cowtown Aircrafters and Justin. The rest of the work was done here by, uh, by other people all through COVID. Uh, this was in some respects a, a release for a lot of people because they came out during COVID and were able to work on the airplane, even if they wore their masks uh, and other things. So uh, we want to just give you a quick look at the airplane and, uh, and a little shout out to Lockheed Martin who opened up their archives for us uh, to allow us to get uh, some of the old archive information about the airplane. Uh, PPG uh, Industries over in Arlington, uh, Texas provided us with some of the paint for this airplane along with a, a beautiful new transparency or canopy and uh, also uh, uh, Prado Logistics uh, here locally transported the airplane from here to Justin and then after it was painted brought it back so this has been a lot of a lot of love and a lot of work by a lot of different people and now it's here for the community to enjoy uh, we assume that during the period of time that the airplane has been uh, in production and design, which is 50 years now, that approximately 400,000 people have worked at General Dynamics and Lockheed. So it just—it was not just—it was not just a profession or a career for a lot of people, but that affected all of those families. So it probably widespread across the community, affected at least four million people. We know that this airplane sent people to college. It sent people to law school. It sent people to a number of different things and supported this community in a huge way from an economic impact study. So the public uh, unveiling is going to take place tomorrow on June 1st, and we're going to encourage everybody to come out and see a real Texas treasure, an airplane that helped build Fort Worth.